So thanks, thanks for the introduction, uh, Joanna. Um, yeah, I'm I'm climate change um, lead in the cabinet, and uh, it was really great when uh, the leader asked me to add, add that to my portfolio. Um, really emphasising the commitment in Newcastle to have um, to have climate change at the heart of the, of our ambitions of, as a city. So, um, I did actually have. Um, some things to say originally about why we got to where we are, but I think actually uh, John and Matt have covered quite a lot of this and I'm not sure really why I should go over all of those things again, considering the audience that we've got. But um, just to say that we too had been doing quite a bit of work previously, but I think it was really that whole kind of movement and re-emphasis that Greta Thunberg brought about that enabled us to look again at what we were doing within the council, but also to understand that, you know, our residents were really pushing for this. We were being lobbied about what we would do when we wanted to really make a, um, a commitment to say, we're gonna put this at the heart of the work that we do. So we did, again, like John has said, um, and Matt has said, declared a climate emergency um, and, uh, that this is a great little video, but I won't play it because of time. Um, and people say, well, why would you declare, declare a climate emergency in Newcastle as well? Does it, you know, some of our residents think, you know, does it really impact on me on a, on a local level? Well, you know, we know that we've had Thunder Thursday in the town. We've had the beast from the east. We know we've got tidal sea, um, surge. And that, that picture on the bottom is the quayside. You know, lots of Newcastle is very close to the, you know, we're on a river, we're on a really big river, that's all to do with the sea, so we know it's really important on a local level. So what we did in Newcastle was, <clears throat> I've got a timeline here, and we declared the climate emergency, and then what we did was we decided to set up a climate um, convention. And as Joanna said, that's something that I lead on in the city. And the climate convention is is um, got three strands to it. There is a climate change committee, uh, which the leader chairs, uh, but it's a cross party committee um, to get that cross party buy in. There's a net zero task force because we recognise that it's not just the council that needs to be doing something. Yes, the local council can lead on on this. But actually, this is something that we need to work in partnership with all of our organisations in the city. So our Net Zero Task Force brings together our, um, our anchor institutions because we're quite lucky in Newcastle in the fact that our hospital trust also declared a climate emergency, the first hospital trust in the country. Um, and our universities declared, Newcastle University declared a climate emergency, but Northumbria also really um, our partners and our net zero task force as well as our local college so our net zero task force brings together our airport our businesses our voluntary sector and our community representatives trade unions and the universities and we all come together to look at what we can do around achieving net zero and then the third strand is the climate the citizens assembly but we decided to do that on a north of the Tyne area so that include that's been run and run by our mayor um, and that's got put on hold slightly during COVID, but it's up and running again now. So we had a three strand approach to what we were going to do about tackling this in our city. <laughs> so when we declared the climate emergency and we set up the climate um, committee, we decided that we wanted to put out a call for evidence. We put out a call for evidence in the city city because we knew we had lots of experts in the city. That information from the call for evidence uh, resulted in us holding a climate summit. And the climate summit was really interesting because some of the information that came out of that was something that we already knew were part of our emissions. So we knew that lots of residents were talking to us about housing. They were talking to us about transport, cycling, active travel. Um, and these were things that we knew were all, already would be part of our emissions going forward. But we, we used the information gathered from the climate summit and the information from our net zero task force to pull together our net zero action plan. And there's a link there for our action plan. And we our action plan 
sets about the actions we're going to take to get us to there by 2030. But this is a really fluid document. It's something that changes. Um, it's reviewed every year, but it'll change as new technologies come online, but also as new developments come along. So we're, we're constantly looking at this. It's not a set in stone plan. Our net zero vision is, is really about having a clear direction, but also just about looking to have innovation, to demonstrate what low carbon concepts can do, but it's about also, it's about making sure that we recover after COVID as well. But I really like this image that we've got here. It's about including the individuals, the environment and the economy and how we can pull that together to get us there. Um, and you can see there, we're looking at what we can do around active travel, whether that decarbonisation of build, public buildings. Um, and, I, and I love that picture there at the bottom of Grey Street, which is one of our most beautiful places in our city. So in Newcastle, we know our missions are, just checking my timing, we know that our missions are mainly energy. Um, and then the next biggest emission is from transport. Um, and then we've got the small aspect there on waste. But, you know, when we talk about energy, we're talking about commercial and homes and how we heat our homes. And in our action plan, we've had to look at, we've got different actions for different aspects of the emissions. So we've got things there around um, the buildings that we have, the solar panels on our buildings, looking at district heat energy, looking at heat pumps, looking at how we can um, look at building regulations in terms of housing. But also there you've got in the grey, we've got the active transport, um, what we need to do around reducing the emissions from uh, transport. But also, we've also got things up there about biodiversity and looking at how we can reduce, reuse, recycle as well. I have mentioned before that we can't do this to, um, on our own and that we've looked at partnership working throughout the city, but we're also looking at what we can do with our residents and how we can encourage everybody to take their, their own individual actions as well. Just, I think, I think it's similar to what Matt was saying about getting people involved and getting people um, engaged with it. So we've got a net zero pledge. We've got one for children and young people. We've got a student one that's not actually on this picture here, but we've also got a one for businesses. And we're looking at having these pledges as a sign that we can have in businesses so they can, people can understand and which businesses have signed up to the pledge. Um, and then we've got an individual one as well, trying to get everybody involved in this, because if we are going to reach our target, we've got to do this together. We, um, we wanted to make sure that our net zero action plan was fit for purpose. So we benchmarked our um, emissions um, with the CDP to look at our performance. And we were really pleased to say that we got an A grade which is, you can see on the map, it's one of only four in this country, but also one of only 88 cities in the world that achieved a, a rating from the CDP. Of course, that does mean now that we're under pressure to keep achieving that A grade. Um, I don't know if it would have been far better to achieve a B grade and aim for A, but we're at, we are where we are and we're quite pleased at that. And John mentioned the Global Covenant of Mayors, I think earlier on, uh, we're back, but we're, we're part of this where, you know, one of the really interesting parts of being part of this is, you know, it's about sharing the knowledge, sharing the ambition, but sharing the, the good practice across, because as I said, it's not just one city, it's not just one, it's cities across the world that have got to do this, and I really do think that cities are leading the way. So some of the recent developments I've got there, yeah, we've got the A rating, but we were also really, we were successful with a 27.5 million bid to decarbonize some of our public buildings. Um, and then um, I've just, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but we're, some of the things that I mentioned previously is about that engagement. So we've recently held a, um, an event with the university called um, Newcastle Student Climate Change Summit. And this involved an innovation challenge. Um, it was a 
it was hell it was fantastic it was really involved about over 130 students um people students got together in pairs and came up with some ideas about what we could do as a city and i think we're looking to implement the three winners of that of that challenge but again we're looking at summits with students young people voluntary sector and businesses bringing everybody with us as we move towards with our plans some of the things we mentioned i mentioned before was the the public sector decarbonisation scheme and this is looking at putting solar panels, heat pumps, LED lighting in um, across on 32 uh, places in our city including 16 schools. We want to have one of our, we want to have net zero schools and we want these buildings as well to be where young people will be able to see how being net zero the impact we want it to be a bit more transparent to them so they can use it as part of their curriculum and they can really look at what's happening within their school around its emissions. We've, um, we've been uh, putting out 250 heat pumps across the uh, city in people's homes. They were free to people to apply for. And then I know the government's not had great success with the Green Homes Grant, but as a, a city council, we've had 2.9 million um, where we're looking at how we can make sure and insulate homes throughout our city. And we're looking at those low income homes. Um, we're also busy looking at developing uh, Newcastle Green, which is a GIS renewable energy efficiency network. So we can look at where the emissions are within our city. And there's just a few other examples on there. And we're in partnership with uh, Durham around a North or East community forests that's with five of the local authorities so i think some of the challenges i'm just going to end on a few of the challenges is you making sure we're using it um, data to inform our decisions um we've got this we, i said about the gis analysis so that we can see where we can tailor our energy efficiency so we can look at where we're making the grid connections and so we can then look at the procurement and it's about of making sure that we're aware of where we need to do this in our city. Another challenge is behaviour challenge as well. Um, uh, some of the uh, people who are from local government will know that, you know, we get an awful lot of stick from car drivers when we look to implement um, cycle paths or where we're encouraging people to, to do active travel. It's not the most popular with some residents and it's those residents that sometimes speak the loudest. We need much more um, engagement from those who are really enjoying those cycling lanes. And then obviously we don't own our buses. So, you know, there's a real impact there on us. We need much more devolution on our buses and our transport so we can implement more around that. And I said, you know, we've got uh, there's a picture here of Grey Street. I mentioned Grey Street earlier on. And really, up until recently, it was, it says present, but actually it's more like the future picture now. It was much more of a car park on one of our most beautiful streets in our city. And we've implemented cycling there now. And with, the, with what's been happening with hospitality, we've been able to extend the paths at the moment for enable people to get out there and being able to enjoy that street um with taking the cars out of that street and we're, we're also looking at new fleets for our metro as well and potential to expand the metro to enable more people to use that more um different forms of public transport um so like i said <laughs> you might have seen the scooters that we've got on trial at the moment they've been fantastic for some people but again um other people aren't so happy with them but for me, there is challenges involved in all of this, but it's about political leadership as well. It's about us sticking to our guns. It's about we've embedded climate um, into every decision that we make. We have an impact, just as John mentioned, we have climate uh, impact assessments to every decision that is made. Um, but it's about holding our you know, path, making sure that we bring people with us um, on this journey. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, Claire. I don't know whether anybody else saw on LinkedIn over the last sort of two or three days, there's been a wonderful animation of Grace Street that just sort of reveals this, this wonderful green version 
of what it could look like um, if you just closed it almost to all traffic except for that central lane, um, which just made me smile. I thought it was a wonderful, a wonderful alternative view. Slightly, um, I don't know, I don't know. It was, it was quite an extreme view, but it, I liked it a lot. 